Which brand has lost you as a customer? Viewer edition. <laughs> okay, this is absolutely a true story. But years ago, uh, Swanson, uh, the company, they make chicken stock and probably other stuff. But they had a commercial where it was like showing like some chicken soup being made. And the voiceover and the woman in the commercial was just like, who makes chicken stock as good as your grandma? And then the woman just is on screen. She's like, I do. Because I use Swanson chicken stock. Like, she she pulled that crap out. And I was furious. <laughs> like, I was watching this commercial. And I'm like, who do you think you are, you uppity bee? Oh, you don't know my grandma and her amazing soup. How dare you? And... It's the most weird, petty thing. And I genuinely, I know it's a commercial. I know they're not saying bad things about my grandma, but just on principle, I've never bought their products now because I hated that commercial that much. So there's my dumb story. I hope the rest of these are better than that. <laughs> story one. Subway, you might think it's the same reason as in the video, but no, I got food poisoning from a tuna sub. It tasted weird when I ate it, but I'm usually a little fussy about food, so I figured it was probably me. Half an hour later, I was heaving up my stomach and was basically attached to a toilet after that. Called the store the next day, but my goal was simply for them to check the tuna supply as I thought it might be turning and my sensitive body had caught on to the first hint. Manager completely stonewalled me, denied I had food poisoning. Their store was perfect. I could never have gotten it from there. No, she wouldn't check the tuna. How dare I imply that there was something less than perfect about the tuna? No, I was just a dumb kid who didn't know how the real world worked. I told her I was certain it was food poisoning and that it was from there. Oh, do you want a voucher or something? No. Like I said, I, I wanted you to check the tuna. Literally, she could have lied and said, well, I don't think it was us. I will check the tuna anyway, and I would have gone away content. Instead, she lost a customer forever. I later learned it might have been the mayo they mixed the tuna with. I didn't know they mixed in mayo at the time, but the point still stood. All she had to do was say she'd look into it, and I would have left happy. Pity I wasn't aware of all the organizations I could have reported that to. Yeah, folks, I mean, restaurants, things happen, there's food, sometimes there might be some food poisoning, but don't deny it and act like you could never, you know, food poison someone as a restaurant. Apologize, make amends, and take steps to make sure that crap doesn't happen again. We all make mistakes, but if you're going to deny it like that, then I'm going to believe that you will continue making that mistake. Story 2. I remember when I was 19, I went to a Starbucks and got myself a Frappuccino. I drank it and looked at the receipt, and it was like $8. I was like, this isn't even worth it, and laughed at myself for spending what was, at the time, a full hour's paid work for a drink that wasn't even really that big of a deal. It's not like I was a customer in the first place, but it definitely was an experience that gave me no reason to return. Story 3. I remember the clothes company tried suing my family. Why? Because they lied that we didn't return the clothes we refunded. But we did. I kid you not, instantly, where my family said to the company, let's settle this in court then, they instantly said, no, it's fine. Oh, hey, look, we found the clothes we totally weren't lying about. Story 4. Friendlies served us moldy buns, undercooked chicken, and spoiled lettuce on our chicken sandwiches. That one was open 24 hours and it was very late, so we were the only customers there. They thought we were overreacting when we stood up to leave, and they called the police, accusing us of skipping on our bill. Police showed up, took a look at our food, called the health department, and the place was shut down and never reopened. Now I want to throw up every time we pass a Friendly's. I'm not even 100% sure what Friendly's is. Like, I've heard of it, but I don't really know that much about the kind of food that they make. Um... But anytime I hear about some of these, like, restaurants that you find, you know, in other parts of the country, I'm always like, ooh, if I'm around that part of the country, I want to try it. But now I read a story like this, and I'm like, hmm, now I don't know if I want to try it. Uh. Story 5. I don't remember much of this story personally, just the seething pain whenever I tried to drink, but it has been told by my dad over the years. I was three, maybe four years old at the time, and we went to a dentist for a longer procedure. 
I was deadly afraid of the dentist, so they decided to do the procedure with me under mild anesthesia, only knocked out for 90 minutes max. Not a big deal. During the procedure, the clamp holding open my mouth slipped and cut open my entire lower lip. Could not drink from a glass or straw without immense pain for a three-year-old. Now, accidents happen. Would not have been the issue it ended up being, but the dentist was being a total butt about it. She never apologized for the accident and even tried to bill my parents extra for dealing with the aftermath of the accident they caused. All the while, my parents now have to deal with a borderline PTSD-riddled kid who would stab a dentist with a knife before opening his mouth. Thankfully, I grew out of it due to an actual competent dentist. Needless to say, my dad told the dentist to go F themselves and walked out. Ooh, I have a dentist story. Uh, it was not me, but I was in the waiting room and my brother had to go to the dentist and he was like, I don't know, four or five at the time, like little kid, same kind of age where it's like, dentist, scary. And my mom was in the room with him and my little brother was apparently crying and the dentist who didn't like the crying kid, even though he was a dentist for kids primarily, um, just grabbed a rag and stuffed it in my brother's mouth. And uh, what I heard from the lobby was my mother scream at this dentist and threaten to deck him <laughs> before she came marching out with my brother, grabbing me and just going, we're never going to this effing dentist again. <laughs> Story six. Okay, so this happened to my aunt and grandmother while I was staying over at their place one night. They called a pizza place to order pizza, can't remember from where, and a couple of secondary items from them. The call went fine, they said we'd have it in 30 to 45 minutes, which was their normal timing for what was ordered and where we were. That time passed, no delivery. My aunt calls them back to confirm the order and see what was taking so long. I do not know what was said during that specific call, but we were apparently told they'd get our order out to us in the next 30 minutes. Time passed, no delivery again. My aunt called them yet again, something happened with the order or something, so they asked what we wanted again. She reordered and they said it would be about 30 minutes. Time passed. No delivery yet again. She called them a third time. By this point, they had closed, and they informed her that they'd threw out the order because they couldn't find the place. My aunt asked for a confirmation on the address, and despite having given them her address at least twice, they had gotten the address wrong. They were unwilling to make it right because they had closed, despite the error being completely their own doing. My aunt informed them that they'd lost a customer and hung up on them. She never ordered from them again. That happened in the mid-90s, by the way, and it's still one of the memories that stuck in my mind, because even as a kid, I couldn't believe how dumb the whole situation was. Story 7. PetSmart. Long story short, I had a Jack Russell Terrier with a number of digestive and intestinal issues, to a point where it could become life-threatening without specific foods and medicines. One particular day, we ran out of his food and had to keep him on a set schedule. Our usual place was already closed, and the only other place that had it was PetSmart. I go in to get some, but they tell me that I can't get it without their prescription program. Not only did I not have enough time for them to process a prescription, but that was also a flat-out lie, and I found that part out a while later. Luckily, our usual place came through for us and let us stop in to get some in time, and a crisis was averted. So not only did PetSmart lie to my face about a can of dog food, but even after I explained the situation to them, they kept up the lie all for the sake of a few extra bucks and could have cost my dog his life as a consequence. Ever since then, six years on, I have not set foot in a PetSmart again. Story 8 the local Pizza Hut. I used to work there as a cook years ago and was one of the few who followed any rules regarding hygiene, station cleanliness, and product expiration dates. Management only allowed expired product to be thrown out once the health inspector failed the store with two pages of infractions related to expired product, cross-contamination, and improper fry practices. The biggest offense was when they saw one of the morning cooks had neglected to sanitize the basket handle and didn't use the safety gloves, contaminating the entire station by checking sauce containers. The idiot was about to go back to the make table without washing their hands when the inspector stopped them. I started tearing into co-workers and riding management's butt every time I saw things like that. I think the only reason my schedule was reduced to four hours a week is because I made sure they knew that I know the number for local and state agencies. 
Ultimately, I quit my job shortly after my stress levels reached the breaking point, leading to me having anxiety attacks. The reason I stuck around long enough for that to happen is simple and stupid. I was in my early 20s, meaning I was complacent, stupid, and stubborn about all the wrong things. Never again have I treated a job as if it were a hill worth dying on. <sighs> I mean, the sad thing is, whenever you have these big chain restaurants that primarily staff themselves with teenagers who are paid just the bare minimum that they can get away with, a lot of this kind of stuff kind of gets sidelined. My first couple jobs were at a Hardee's and a McDonald's, two fast food, and let me tell you, all the health things that you're supposed to do, that crap did not get done because, like, the, most of the employees there were teenagers, and teenagers don't care, especially when you're paying them. At the time, I was making five forty-five an hour. I'm old. Story nine. There is a greedy, evil store called Lily's, and we went shopping to buy something for Christmas. My grandma bought two little heaters that cost $100 each. When we got home, she opened one box to test out the heater. She didn't like it. So we headed back to return the heaters to get her money back. The shop denied refunds and kicked us out like peasants. We spread our warning messages to the people not to shop at Lily's. She lost $200 to that corrupt, soulless company. Story 10. I also had a poor experience with Bank of America. My mother was trying to deposit $500 cash into her account using their ATM at the bank, and instead the machine just swallowed up the money and stopped working. We spent the next three hours trying to sort it out with the Bank of America workers, and eventually they told us it'll take three weeks for them to give us back our money that they took from us. Absolutely no one should be using Bank of America. Story 11. Not me, but because Olive Garden nearly killed my mom, we never eat there. So my parents went to Olive Garden years ago. When my parents ordered, they told the waiter to not add mushrooms to my mom's food as she is fatally allergic to them. When the food had come, they had mushrooms, so my parents explained that my mom couldn't eat them. The next time around, they bring back the same exact food, only this time they had picked out the mushrooms. My parents still saw bits of shrooms. At that point, my dad was peed, screamed at them for nearly killing my mom, and they left. Story 12. This story is on a much smaller scale since I didn't drop the entire brand, just a specific location under the brand, this being one particular Domino's located near my college buddy's house. I ordered some food for us to pick up by curbside via the Domino's app, and when we got there, the order wasn't ready yet. So we sat and waited while the timer on the app counted down. If they didn't have your order ready by the time the timer reached zero, you were supposed to get your order for free. Once the timer got down to five seconds, it stopped, and we got excited because we thought they finally had our order ready, but they didn't come out. And after another minute of waiting, we went into the building to ask what the hell was taking so long with our order. We also tried asking if they were going to give us our order for free since they froze the countdown timer on the app even though they didn't have our order ready, but the idiot at the counter just kept saying, it's almost ready, just give us a few minutes. B, you already kept us waiting this long. What was the holdup? Thankfully, they finally gave us our order soon after that, but we agreed to never order from that one location ever again. Fortunately, the Domino's location near my house have a much better track record of delivering orders on time, so I still get food from those places. Hey, I get it, people working at these stores. You're probably, like, swamped with a bunch of work, maybe. And I'm sure that you've had plenty of customers try to find little ways to goof you over with this system. And you get sick of that stuff, and so you don't want to let anyone get away with anything. But when they were clearly in the right, you gotta just admit your fault there. Or maybe they, I don't know, maybe they screwed up enough times that they were all getting in trouble for having to give out free pizzas. I don't know the whole story, but, I mean, in the end, don't try and goof over some people that just wanted their pizza on time. Come on. Story 13. Chick-fil-A. Last time I ate there, it gave me severe food poisoning, and I'm not kidding. I was on the toilet for 30 hours straight, exploding out of both ends with a 102-degree fever. I actually had to be hospitalized for dehydration. This happened in 2019, and I will never go back there. I mean, hey, if you need another reason not to go to Chick-fil-A, then good. That's fine by me. F Chick-fil-A. Their sandwiches aren't even that good, and their special sauce, I can do way better. Screw you, Chick-fil-A. 
Story 14, My Stepdad and Chili's. He was a fan for a while, but noticed the slow decline in quality over the years. It came to a head one night when he, my mom, and my stepbrother, his son, all went out to a local Chili's and were given some of the worst service they've received in years. Slow on taking orders when seated, slow on drinks, when food arrived they forgot about stepbrother's food, and he waited pretty much until the parents finished their underwhelming meal until he got his burger, and it wasn't even a finished burger. It was missing a lot of its toppings, and it was cold. My stepdad is usually the patron saint of respect and patience with waitstaff, as he was one for decades. But he had enough of the staff's excuses and, as politely as he could, asked for a refund, at least for his son's meal, and he's never stepped into a Chili's again and never will. Story 15 Ah, yes, LA Fitness. Good to see them here. Let me tell my story with them. A few months back, I worked for them for about a week. For starters, they had me working 12 hours a day, and I was only getting paid for eight. Had a light panel come open above the squat rack, called the manager and notified him about it being open. Turns out it had been open for about a month and could have fallen at any time and messed someone up because it was three stories high. Also, I brought up a legit safety concern to the regional manager about fire safety as I had put out a fire the day before that had started behind our LE Fitness. It was really dry out, and it was in the 90s and hadn't rained in weeks, so one wild ember and the place could have burned down. Instead of taking my safety concerns seriously, he just talked down to me. The final straw was when I was told I have to change the way I do sales as it wasn't effective, even though I brought our LE Fitness to the top three in the region the entire week by myself. When I heard this, I said I had to get something from my car and promptly drove off, never looking back. There's more, but it's getting a little long, but those were just the highlights. Story 16. HP because of their ink jets. I had one that had a scanner on it. The ink cartridges lasted less than 10% of the amount of pages that were advertised, even though I never printed anything excessive. The majority of the ink got wasted in the lengthy self-cleanups that started every time I turned the thing on. It would just blast ungodly amounts of ink into itself. Once, one of the colored ink cartridges was down to around 10 to 15%, it already told me to replace it. And this wasn't just a warning. I could not print anything at all until I replaced the cartridge, not even black and white. But that's not all. It wouldn't even let me scan. You need four decently full ink cartridges to scan pages. A replacement of all four cartridges cost over 70 bucks. This scummy behavior is why I decided against buying more HP products like laptops worth thousands. To hell with everything to do with home printers. Printers are the devil's tool. They break down so easily. Any printer that you get will have problems, and nothing you ever do online ever fixes it for very long. And ink cartridges, I mean, we all know that they're a scam, and they keep trying to find ways to be like, no, you can't use the refillable ones or this or that. You know what, HP? Why don't you offer a refilling service or something then, you know? Why don't you try and, like, undo all the plastic waste or something like that, you know? Don't blame us for wanting to save a little bit of money on your scam. Story 17. Lots of stories about Bank of America. Yep, they do indeed suck. Used to have a student account with them that had no minimum balance fees, and then when I graduated from college, they charged me every month for them. So I went to close out the account. The manager asked if there was anything they could do to keep me on as a customer. I said, can you take away the minimum balance fees? The manager said, oh, I can offer you an account with lower minimum balance fees. Yeah, that was the easiest no I've ever said in my life. Story 18. GameStop was the only source for games when I was a kid. Fourth or fifth grade, a good number of my games were stolen with my name on all of them in Sharpie by a kid who spent the night. Saw them for sale at GameStop with my mother and she told them they were stolen from me. They refused to return them and the police were called pre-cell phone days. Once they arrived, my games had mysteriously disappeared off the shelves and they told the police they never saw them and didn't know what we were talking about. On top of that, that location was always rude and called myself and other white kids by racist slurs and names. Once I found Game Crazy in high school, one and a half hour bike ride away each direction, I never went back. Curse you, Hollywood video, for letting Game Crazy die. Story 19. Tim Hortons. 
I never really liked any of their products, and every time I asked for a custom order, like no lettuce and sandwich, nothing major, they never obliged. But what really killed it for me is when they showed everyone they treat their employees like cattle. Ontario passed a law, or bill, or whatever you call it, increasing the minimum wage to $14, I think, and almost immediately, Tim Hortons announced that in response to that law, they removed all their employees' benefits. The details are a bit hazy as I live in Quebec. This of course caused a massive uproar, but regardless of how the matter was settled, I'm not giving money to a company that treats its employees like cattle. From what I heard, they stuck to their guns, but I could be wrong. On a side note, it's funny how many arguments it causes with relatives or friends when I'm trying to decide where to eat and I stand my ground of I'm not setting foot in a bloody Tim Hortons while some of said relatives and friends are on the complete opposite mind of it has to be Tim Hortons. Usually I tend to offer the option of putting it to a vote when such a thing happens, but not with Tim. I'll sooner go to a gas station and buy overpriced generic crap that probably tastes like crap before following a group into a Tim. You know, despite the fact that I have grown up in northern Minnesota, not far from the Canadian border where Tim Hortons rules and reigns supreme, uh, I've never been in a Tim Hortons. I've heard plenty about Tim Hortons. I've had people sing its praises to me. In fact, typically when it comes to Tim Hortons, all you ever hear are people just like, oh, holy Tim, oh, squirt your coffee on my face. I don't know what I'm going for here, but it's interesting. It's interesting to actually hear someone so vehemently anti Tim Hortons and kind of makes me uh, kind of makes me feel good about never trying it. Story 20. My dad went to a Wendy's one time and found a rubber glove in his fries. When he went inside to ask why there was a glove in his fries, the managers just said, it's not one of ours. Story 21. Dell. Bought two of their Inspiron models throughout my four years in college. The second one, after the first, had degraded to the point my then nine-year-old Samsung notebook was faster, and both were some of the most problematic laptops I've ever worked with. Also paid for six months of their Dell transfer service with the second Inspiron to transfer my data from the first, and ended up transferring most of it by hand anyway because the transfer tool didn't even work once the amount of data being transferred surpassed a few gigabytes. I would sooner saw my nuts off with a rusty spoon than buy another laptop from them. Story 22. Papa John's, when the Affordable Health Care Act came out, the CEO was being that they would have to raise the price of a by a couple cents a pizza in order to give the employees health care. They fired a bunch of people instead. I just stopped buying from them since then. Also GameStop. I used to work in the repair facility, and it was just wild what they let pass through quality. I hadn't bought from them since I started working there. And that was the only reason anyone was ever upset with Papa John's. Papa John's never did anything questionable after that. Right? They did. They, they, they didn't, right? Oh no. Story 23. My mom and dad had just moved to a new country and had a Samsung washing machine, I think. They had a guy, an electrician from Samsung, I believe, come to fix the machine, but he kept having issue after issues with them. After a week, he said that a part needed to be replaced, so he got my parents to pay for it. Two weeks go by, the part hasn't arrived, and the guy keeps saying, there's nothing I can do until it arrives. At this point, mom and dad are extremely frustrated and call in another guy to have a look. Fix the thing in less than 30 minutes. Now I get the pleasure of hearing absolute piece of crap from my dad every single time an ad for Samsung pops up on the TV. Story 24. Mellow Mushroom. They forgot about our table. Over the course of about four hours, we ordered a pizza, got drinks, and eventually dishes. No food ever came. My mother kept talking to people trying to get service, saying they would be right there. I, as a kid, couldn't sit still and had nothing to do and was severely dehydrated as they never refilled our water. Since I was a kid, I was also not allowed to leave the table to use the restroom or stretch my legs. Story 25. I forgot what they used to be called, but they're Spectrum now. One of their company cars hit my mom's car because the driver wasn't paying attention. It took years for them to even give us a settlement because they kept denying it was their fault. I'll never ever use Spectrum. Screw them for destroying my mom's health and our finances. Uh, a, as someone who used to work for a cable company very, very similar to Spectrum, um, I know Charter 
uh, was either bought by Spectrum or bought them or they were, but uh, Charger Spectrum is definitely a thing. So you might be thinking of that. And B, there are so many reasons to hate cable companies. So many reasons. <laughs> but uh, that might be a, a new top of the list, at least for you. That's, uh, that is an extremely understandable reason to hate them. Story 26. I didn't shop at it, but I'm not getting another drink from there again. One of my family members bought me a green tea matcha from Starbucks. Turns out there was spit in my drink, and I spent the next five or so minutes trying not to vomit. Story 27. I don't remember the name, but one time I was in town and went to a restaurant to the left of the one that I usually went to with my mother and girlfriend at the time. We sat down, ordered, and just enjoyed ourselves for a bit. When we got our order, there was hair in our food and drinks. We took one look at our orders and simply just up and walked out. Our waitress tried to stop us, saying we hadn't finished our meal or paid yet, but we never even tried to look back at her. Another time, I was with the school group. I live rurally and only go to town on certain occasions like school trips or medical, and apparently everyone wanted to go to that one restaurant. I point blank told one of the chaperones that you couldn't pay me to go and eat there and all but demanded to eat somewhere else. Rule one when it comes to picking a place to eat, never go to a place with a high turnover rate. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.